Jasper and Dennis here for Submission Radio Australia outside Team Ellis Jim and Key Law Downs on the eve of Jorge Masvidal's first day speaking tour and we're here with his manager Abe Kawa I guess one of the hardest working men in MMA because you just got off a massive flight <laughs> straight here Submission Radio already harassing you to talk to us and you're kind enough to do it Absolutely. I gotta say everybody's uh, known obviously the, the year that Jorge Masvidal has had in 2019 where would you say he is as far as the biggest stars in the UFC at the moment? Well, first off, I'm honored to be on your show. I, I've been a big fan for a long time, so you, me being on is, is the pretty check much is honor. in the mail. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm not that expensive. <laughs> uh, where where Jorge is now? That's a that's a good one. Um, I think he's probably top three stars in the UFC right now. He's obviously uh, way bigger than the current champion uh, in in any weight class in any weight class outside of probably uh, John. John's probably a bigger, bigger star than he is. Uh, I think Wei Li Zhang, but that's China. That's I, I don't know if you count that as being a huge star. You know, you got Khabib, and Khabib's got his his uh, whole thing going on as well. Uh, but I think in terms of like U.S. sales and people recognizing and and buying pay per views, I think he's probably top three right now in the in the UFC. It's interesting that you mentioned buying pay per views because here we are, sort of on the way to International Fight Week with this fight with him and Kamara Usman. That is, hasn't been officially confirmed yet, but we know the negotiations are ongoing. Right. When you approach a fight like that and you know the challenger in Jorge will be bringing in a big part of the audience compared to the actual champion like Kamara Usman how hard is it to get the deal negotiated especially with the UFC's history of trying to get the challenger a lot less money than what the champ the champion is going to be making well I think we did a good job with Jorge versus Nate no 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 real like you know no welterweight title was on the line there and we were able to do a good job with that I think the UFC knows what they have in Jorge I think they they've been uh, very open to you know giving him what they you know what he deserves and uh, that being said it's easy man it's not hard when you when you're the A side you're the A side there, there's no no one can tell you that you're not I don't care where it comes from you know that's that's not being disrespectful that's just knowing your value and where you are uh, Jorge fighting anyone at 170 pounds, uh, not named Conor McGregor is probably the A side. Does it get easier with each fight? Like when you remind the UFC, hey, well, this is what you paid us for last fight, and he won that fight. Does it get a little bit easier in the negotiations? Well, winning winning a fight doesn't get you paid because if that was the case, Usman would be a multimillionaire, <laughs> right? That that that's the way it goes. Oh, you've got to be able to do it both inside the cage and outside the cage. You have to have you have to get the fans to be able to relate to you and be you know be there for you because winning fights, there, a lot of guys win fights. Just winning fights isn't enough. You've got to win fights. You've got to, uh, you know, capture the audience. You've got to be able to go out there and, and really sell uh, what you're putting on because eventually, the UFC is promoting a fight. But if they have nothing other than, you know, just you taking a guy down and going five rounds every single time, truth be told, they're not going to pay you. They're going to say, yeah, you're 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 a good fighter, but you're not. You're not a draw. You're not a guy that's bringing us, you know, uh, that money. And that's at the end of the day what this prize fighting is all about it's about the prize it's not about anything else so uh, we're good you mentioned the a side and a lot of us suspect that you know jorge is the big drawer in this fight with this man but is that official can you confirm that for us i mean you're in the negotiation <laughs> table is he officially the a side going in against i Kamara mean i Wilson? could confirm that today tomorrow a week from now a year from now you've I seen think the numbers you it's know what's not going even down. close it's not even close double it would be close to double what, I, you're, wait, when you say close to double, you're saying... Getting paid double what Kamaru might be getting paid for. I don't even look at Kamaru as a person who can even scratch what Jorge's getting paid. It doesn't uh, make any sense. It doesn't. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what Jorge's done in this last year, uh, in and out of the cage, you know, again, it's not a knock on, on Usman. I, I, wanna make sure, I, I don't want to make it about, you know, Usman you know, is, is this or that guy. That's not. I have all the respect in the world for him as a fighter. Just as a fan i mean you can do a poll you're on your guys own show and say would you rather watch jorge fight a tree or usman fight gsp i think people are gonna say jorge fight a tree <laughs> over usman fighting gsp you know uh it's the just a very good, skilled skilled tree. you know depending on the tree <laughs> yeah. right it's great you, you it's guys great. got some good looking trees yeah. over here too though <laughs> so it'll work yeah so it, it's it's not it, it's not me knocking him it's just what really the fans want and the fans want to see jorge fight so they're gonna and he you know god bless him in 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 his favor, he's giving the fans what they want, which is, you know, entertainment. He's giving them, you know, not just the 
I'm going out there and fighting. I'm going out there finishing guys. I'm, you know, he calls it the baptism and, you know, he's baptizing guys and, and doing all that stuff. So, you know, what he's doing is next to remarkable in, in our sport today. I think yeah. the fascinating thing is, you know, a lot of people wanted to see this Conor McGregor fight. And I know you put out that tweet where he said Usman was going to be out for an extended period of I thought time. So, right? And uh, you're going to do that. You wanted to see the interim title fight. And we right. saw there were a ton of people who really wanted to do it, I, except for the boss man, Dana White, because well, every time we spoke to him, right. he would just not be across that fight at all. I mean, just tell us a little bit about how hard has it been to try and convince the UFC to put that Conor McGregor fight together? Because I know you've I been on the table a number of I times. Don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's up to the UFC. I think it's up to Conor. If Conor wanted to fight Jorge Masvidal, that fight would be next. It's not the UFC. The UFC wouldn't, they're not going to tell Conor, no, don't fight Jorge. We don't want money. They're never going to do that. You know what I mean? The, the UFC does what the fans want. And if uh, the fans want Jorge versus Conor, which I believe they do, uh, it's up to Connor, man. Jorge said this before. He's not going to bully anybody into fighting him if he wants to go. And he and I think Connor said after the fight uh, he needed more time. And he needed. I think when he says he needs more time, I think he needs to fill out a little bit more, just get a little bit bigger, you know, uh, stronger uh, before taking a guy like Jorge. You know, no disrespect to Cowboy, uh, but Cowboy is not the Cowboy that Jorge fought. The completely different Cowboy, you know. So when you look at it like that and and you put everything together, I think how uh, Connor saw what was you know what essentially the writing on the wall. If I fight Jorge now, whoa. Did you know? he come across his table at all there? Was, was there an offer made? I, was there, if he wanted to, let's put it like this, if he wanted to fight Jorge he can have instead it. of Kamara Usman this international fight week or even in March or Ka whenever it Kamara was. Kamara would happily sit to the side or maybe angrily, I don't know, <laughs> but I don't think he has a choice. I, you know, it, it's, it's a weird position where the guy who owns the welterweight title shot really doesn't, isn't calling the shots. You know, it's a, it's a weird position uh, for him to be in, I get it, but you know, He's got to get popular, I guess. I don't know. You know, it, it's there. I was going to say, is this something that could come back around sort of later down the line? And what do you think it would take to sort of entice Connor into a fight like this, especially as Jorge goes there for the welterweight strap? I'm not talking for Jorge. I'm talking for me now. So this yeah. is not, it's not Jorge saying this. For me, I believe Connor sort of dug himself, put himself in a corner. Uh, he talked all this smack going around, you know, saying this and this about, you know, BMF and I designed the belt and I did all that. And then right after that, oh, I don't want it, but I want it. And, you know, it's a, it's the weirdest thing in the world. So now if you don't fight Jorge at 170 pounds and you take Justin Gaethje, let's say, at 170 pounds, what did you just do? What What's the point of this? It, like, what did you come to 170 for? Now, if he, if he turned around and said, I want to fight Kamaru next or whatever it may be, you know, okay, I, I could see that happening. But let's be real, like I said, Connor versus Kamaru, because Connor loves money. We love money. Everybody loves money, right? So, Connor versus Kamaru or Connor versus Jorge, which one entices the fans? And I think this fan spoke uh, already about that. So, yeah, if Connor wanted the fight, Connor can get the fight tomorrow. That's not a problem, you know? Uh, the good thing is, on our side, you have a guy who doesn't care who he fights. He's just a dude that just wants to make money and, and go out there and put on the best show he can for the fans. So, that's where we are. I think the fascinating thing is uh, we spoke to Masvidal about this GSP. Who could be the right person that gets GSP out of retirement and back to fighting in the UFC one more time? I know you are speaking about the Conor McGregor fight and dream fight. If Masvidal does become champion and wins at International Fight Week, do you believe he's the man that can get GSP out of retirement? Well, he already got one guy out of retirement, and Nate Diaz who came out. You know, he retires people and then unretires guys. So if anybody could do it, it's him. I don't know if GSP uh, would see that. I think uh, GSP is more interested in Khabib from what it sounds like. Uh, you know, the sports change from the GSP days where it's just easy to take everybody down on a power double and then, you know, stand on, get on top of them and, and, and throw. Uh, standing with a guy like Mike Bisbing, I, I thought, you know, was impressive. But Mike's probably not Mike of... Of, of the past either. So GSP is getting older. Um, it looks like he's in phenomenal shape. Can Jorge get him out of retirement? I think, you know, yeah, I think he could. <laughs> Why not? If he goes out there, he becomes the BMF as well as the welterweight, you know, title holder, which he should, uh, you know, considering who's the title holder now, I just think it should happen. Uh, who's bigger? I, even at that point, I think Connor comes knocking on the door and saying, this is the fight I want, you know? So then we're going to sit in a position where we're going to be like, well, do we want Connor? Do we want GSP? Uh, maybe Jorge plays around and says, man, I can make 55 again. What's up, Khabib, you know? <laughs> well, who knows? Or, or you know, Khabib's got to get past Tony. So just saying, mm -hmm. you know, that, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe 185 if, if Yoel doesn't get past Izzy or, you know, whatever. I'm just saying, like, there's so many options for him at that point. He'll be the biggest star in combat sports. I believe at that point, having the BMF and the welterweight title, I think he becomes the biggest, the biggest star in the sport. 
We'll let you go in a moment, Abe, but you mentioned Yoel. I wanted to ask you sort of what do you think about this notion as he takes on Israel Adesanya that he was kind of lucky to get this title shot, you know, at this point of his career. What do you think about the build-up so far between those two guys? We're seeing backflips at press conferences. There's a, there's an interesting energy between the two guys. Yeah, um, I, I'll say this. Uh, lucky, no. There, there's no such thing as luck. That, that man's put in a lot of hard work uh, over the years and... You know, between me and you guys, I know I'm, I'm in Australia, so I can't, I can't really say it's too loud. It's too loud, but I'll give you all one of the two Robert Whitaker fights. You know, I'm a little biased, maybe both, but you know, one of the two Robert Whitaker fights, uh, the Paul Costa fight. If he's a champion, did Paul Costa do enough to win that fight? I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. Uh, looking at it from that point of view, he is the scariest man. Uh, Izzy has, you know, big balls. I like to say uh, for calling him out and, and saying that. But you know, when you when you say the boogeyman's name or you know whatever Candyman name three times in the mirror, he tends to show up. So good luck with that. You know, we'll see how that works. The dynamic between them, between the two of them, to me is awesome. I'd watch those two. I'd, I'd probably pay for for the the, the press conferences. Maybe just do dance offs and, <laughs> yeah. and shit like that. Athletic ability because they're both phenomenal athletes or stud athletes. And I, you know, I think we're all in for as fans. We are gonna get a treat of a show uh, come March seventh. That's gonna be a beautiful pay per view. I think the fascinating thing with Yoel, Yoel is he's just such a big guy, obviously oh, yeah. so athletic, but also friends with John Jones. Yes. So it doesn't yeah. look like he'll be yeah. going up to light heavyweight at any point, but no. do you believe if he was if John wasn't in that division, if he moves up to heavyweight and that sort of spot gets cleared out, sort of similar to a Cain Velasquez, aka situation with Daniel Cormier, do you believe we may see Yoel even make a run in that division if he does become champion of middleweight? If John moves up to heavyweight, I, I can one hundred percent uh, say that I do see Yoel possibly going up to 100% possibly going up <laughs> to light heavyweight. Uh, I, w I would think he would fare very well there. Uh, he, he trains with big, bigger guys now. He does very well against them. Uh, 185, though, is his home. He likes being there, you know, and he makes the weight. Uh, given time, given the, the circumstances, he always makes weight. He's missed weight, uh, you know. Uh, I want to say one time the situation in Chicago was up, was the commission was not him. You know, point one or point, you know, whatever. Uh, off weight is just, you know, embarrassing on their end, not so much on his. So uh, the man makes weight. He loves 185. But if John goes up, 205 is an absolute possibility and I mean like I'd say 90 percent possibility that he goes up and, and challenges there for the uh, light heavyweight belt yeah just on John Jones gotta ask UFC 247 just this past weekend how did you score that fight do you think John Jones did enough to to win that fight live I was sitting uh, front row uh, right after the fight I looked right at John John looked at me and I said three two you got this just like that uh, me and one of the other uh, UFC uh, officials that were there um, he actually had it scored 4-1, and I was leaning towards 4-1 as well. Go back and watch the fight. No sound. Um, I told this to, to John after the fight as well as a lot of the media members as well. I said, do you guys remember Gus John won? A lot of people thought he lost that fight. Go back and watch the fight. Go back and watch the fight. Uh, it ended up being 4-1. It's the same exact scorecards all over again. Uh, we tend to, to look at John, and when he doesn't, finish a guy we say he lost or you know he was close to losing or whatnot which is just absurd when you think about it Anthony Smith was never close to winning outside of the the, the kick where he decided not to take it you know outside of that outside of that um, we can go to Tiago Santos Tiago Santos is still out to this day you know um, one of the matchmakers told me a long time ago in a, whenever you're in a close fight who would you rather be at then at the end of that who would you rather be we saw Dominic carried out of the arena he wasn't able to walk in his own accord. Uh, John had a couple of bumps and bruises too. I'm not saying it was an easy fight. Uh, by no means was it an easy fight, but it, it's like he was in just in a, in a regular uh, uh, practice for that matter. You know, um, I'd love to see a rematch. John's great at rematches. Is that was that what you? No, believe? no. I just said it's yeah, my yeah. opponent. No, no one's saying anything about yeah. it. I just said you know a rematch. And the reason why I bring up the rematch is just because John's always dominated in every rematch he's ever been in. He's ended up finishing both guys he ever rematched. So, you know, what, what makes us think Dominic is any different? What, what do you think is more likely? The immediate rematch, like some people are calling for, or John moving on to the next challenger, whether it be a light heavyweight, say Corey Anderson, or even moving up to heavyweight? Whatever it is, that's going to be up to John. That John John will make up his mind either way. Um, however way it goes, he'll make up his mind and he'll say, okay, this is what I want next. Uh, and he typically does what the fans want him to do. I don't think John's ever shied away from a fight. I don't know. You guys know John for the last 10 years ever say, I don't want to fight this guy? He's a man that's fought Daniel Cormier twice. Think about that for a second. He fought Daniel Cormier. And the current heavyweight champion right now doesn't look like he wants to fight him, you know, for a third time. But, you know, it is it is what it is. The, the, guys, the guy himself takes on every challenge and he looks at it as a challenge that he needs to overcome and he does every single time. So I, I'm, I'm confident 
if that's the fight on the table that John signs, he doesn't say no. Mm. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of people talking about John Jones and Israel Adesanya. He's got to get past Yael Romero first and right. then go through quite a few people. But what do you think these guys, why do you think people are so pumped to see these guys fight each other? Why do you think this is a fight that people just can't stop talking about and thinking about, even though it's possibly a year, possibly a two years down the track, depending on what's happening with John? And what do you think about Israel saying that, hey, if John goes up to heavyweight, I'm going up there and I'm getting that fight. I'm going to fight him. Whether he's at heavyweight, at light heavyweight, wherever he is, I'm going up. I'm chasing him down. I'm getting that fight. I'd say Izzy's probably a little nuts uh, just for calling out Yoel. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> and I'm not going to get into the John Jones Izzy thing because I don't think it's it, – it's, it's uh, you know, I, I come from a real estate background in the real estate uh, world. Uh, whenever, you know, you get excited and you have a deal, uh, one, of, one of my, my uh, mentors used to tell me all the time, you know, it's a mind deal. And I was like, well, what does that mean? What do you mean it's a mind deal? It's only a deal in your mind. It's not a deal anywhere else. So, you know, in, in this case, I would say it's a mind deal. It, 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 there's no deal anywhere. It's, it's it, it really doesn't. It's never been discussed with you guys, never mentioned well, by it, the UFC. It, no. Dana White never brought it out. Let, let's be real. Dana, Dana comes out and says, I want Izzy to fight John. He's doing Izzy a disservice. It'll never happen. It will, it will have to happen when Izzy is really pushing, I really want to fight John. Uh, so I don't think, I, I just don't think it's a fight that's, you know, realistic in any time soon at all. So, you know, talking about it is almost, it's just in our minds. We appreciate your time, Abe, and we'll end on this. Could John Jones possibly fight in June in Australia, in Perth, if if that all comes together? Man, that's that, that would be fantastic if he could. Uh, he could. He can. It's not. It's not like he's Is against he healthy it. after the last fight. Yeah, no bumps, bumps, and bruises, any, yeah. Bumps, bumps and bruises. Typical fight stuff, you know, uh, that he that he's always had uh, after a fight. But nothing, nothing that would keep him out uh, any longer, unless something has changed from you know my flight to, to Australia. Uh, I, I don't know. And and from my last uh, talk with him, it looks like everything is okay for the most part. So unless something pops up, as of right now, I mean, he would be good to go. He he would be good to go, but. Everything's got to fit. Remember, guys, it's not just location and and there. Everything's got to make sense. Opponent, location, money. Everything's got to make sense for him. And if it makes sense for him, he's he's always willing to fight. I'll tell you what. Yeah. He is the jet setter of MMA management. The Rick <laughs> Flair. Looking, looking great the after Rick a big Flair. flight looking just now. Looking great. Look at that. I'm tired, Mike. He's gone from Australia. <laughs> he's going to go back to Vegas. UFC yeah. 248 and a ton of other fights possibly coming Norfolk. up. Possibly Norfolk. Po possibly Nor Norfolk. Norfolk. And so, yeah. Thank I you so it. much. No, we thank appreciate you guys, your man. time I appreciate after a long you guys. flight to Australia. Thank you. Thank you for being so hospitable, man. You guys are awesome. Thank you.